Well, hi there, racing fans, and welcome to another edition of Winning Ways, where we've got a jam-packed, action-packed program. Uh, we've got some great stuff in uh, current affairs, which we're going to be chatting about, including Conor McGregor. You don't want to miss that. And uh, then you don't want to miss your call, where we've got uh, Louis Horsen, one of the most outspoken trainers I've ever met. He's not scared to mince his words. He's uh, relocated to KwaZulu-Natal. And uh, we're going to find out all about him and his relocation and find out what he's got to offer because he's got a lot to offer. Lip service is great at And we're looking forward to being able to chat to Louis. Yeah. He'll have um, a couple of interesting facts, won't he? Absolutely. It will be interesting to talk to you. And I'm surprised you got out of bed after Arsenal. Yeah. Well, great performance. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, what did I tell you last yeah. week? I mm. said to you they've got no defence. Yeah. And when they do get the ball, all they do is they have passing practice outside the 18-yard box. They never look like they're going to score. They could and have, they never they could like have caught goals. eight. Liverpool absolutely rolled them. Eh? Well, you know, well, I think it's looking... Wenger, you know what happens? It's when you get tired, okay? Like I'm getting tired as a racehorse trainer. <laughs> it, becomes, it becomes an onerous job, okay? Mm -hmm. And Wenger is tired as a manager. He has got so no it's his fault again. answers. Okay. Of course it's his fault. Okay. He's in charge of the team. He's, he has done nothing to boost that team in the last mm. 10 years. They won't keep we Sanchez. Bought, we bought Sanchez. He they was the buyer of the, of, of the century. But they can't keep him because he's got no players around him. Mm. You know, Uzzel's so they, tired. Um, Man United no looking good. Man, Man City in, 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 in a deep and injury time. Grabbed a winner. Spurs what happened to equalized. Spurs? First, again, the, the Wembley hoodoo. We can't win a Wembley. We should have been a couple up first off. Late in the second off, they came back and they were better than us. But and I know in the last one standing competition, is down to 14 now because everyone lumped on Spurs to win. I saw that the whole team were down to Spurs. So we've gone three rounds and there are 14 play players Spurs left, left in the last Over 200, there's only 14 left. Yeah, it just shows you, but as you said, it wouldn't go seven rounds. It wouldn't rounds. go seven rounds. James, let's talk about uh, rugby. I know you're a passionate rugby player. You used to be a lock for Fiji. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about the Springboks? What's your call on them? Well, the Springboks have got some good locks. Um, but I still think that they're very one-dimensional. I think that, uh, I think that uh, the Pumas let themselves down. They mm. just, you know, they've just got no discipline yeah. at all. And uh, the coach has really got to talk to them. I wasn't that impressed, I must yeah. tell you. I think that uh, come, I was really impressed with Australia. I think that, uh, that... The um, kicking cost him. They're the kicker, they're yeah, the one. Yeah, I, I think that the coach has now got the team right. He's got yeah. the mix right. I like Beal. Uh, yeah, good player. I, I think that, um, you know, the fly half... Beal, then you've yeah. got uh, the, the they, they, Falau. They, they've got some good they, players. They really gave the New Zealand. The All Blacks showed their money. class, been losing after 77 minutes and winning because of handing the ball. So those two teams now, Australia have raised the board. I think yeah. they've both got five tries, James, but yeah. it makes it interesting for us now. We win, the, uh, the, team that, the, the team that really worries me is. Um, Arsenal. The, no, the, the Arsenal <laughs> on soccer, but the Blue Bulls in rugby. What's have going wrong there? Have you ever seen anything like that? This disaster. If I told you three years ago that the Pumas are going to beat the Blue Bulls, Impossible. you would have said to me, you're in cloud cuckoo land. And we've got uh, the great John Mitchell as the coach. Yeah, he's going to try and Give him time. Give him time. Well, James, it shows the, the, the Sharks, any of your Western Province friends phone you off? We went down there and beat they, them. They all phoned me and congratulated me. Oh, well and, you know, <laughs> well and so they deserve to. Uh, yeah. They're, they're good losers, those yeah, mountain goats. Yeah, they're good goats, losers. You know? What well, they uh, call the mountain goats. The mountain goats, the very good losers. Mountain goats, yeah. And th what I must tell you is that Chris Room is going to win the Welta, the Spanish uh, cycle race. And uh, the, he will be the third man to ever have done the double. Uh, Fantastic. So that's, that's good news. Uh, and good news for us, we both had a winner this week, James. So we should be geez, talking horses. A good week for good trainers. Good week okay, for good let's trainers. Let's move on with that yeah. lot of rubbish and we'll go and see three to follow. Well, there we go. Let's go and have a look at the first one. And we're going to go and have a look at uh, one of Waiha Mowing's runners. Uh, we're going to turf it in the 24th of August. And we're going to look at Go Fuji. Yeah, Go Fuji is uh, drawn towards the inside here at Turfentine. 
and uh, gets out fairly well, you know, ridden by his brother, and uh, it's it's uh, in the race. But there's there's a lot of speed in this race. The eventual winner, Melinda's Garden, shows pace. Flying Falcon, Elida Vaz got a good a bit of speed as well. And uh, Washong allows this horse to drift towards the inside, and uh, it picks up late. The winner's a comfortable winner, but it's a it's a good run, James. I'm actually not sure that Wesley didn't ride this horse, but it's well, one of the two of them. You know, with the, when they both got the same name, it's quite difficult. It could be, but. Uh, uh, one of the two of them, and, and uh, certainly down the inside there, uh, Go Fuji right on the inside, the far, farther side of the race course. Um, and here it gets a smack or two, and starting to get into the race, and then gets punched out with the hands. Now you see, gets punched out with the hands, and it uh, looks like other horses run right past him. This horse with the orange comes up, and the horse in the white in the middle. And then um, got busy again. Yeah, it does look like a big horse, James, but it ran a very good. Uh, run, good debut. The winner, Corne Spices, also is very quick. Melinda's guard, and that won quite well. Yeah, so the run under the belt makes such a big difference. Yeah. Uh, we're going to move on and have a look at. Uh, we went to Scottsville on Wednesday, and um, Desmond Edgars, for him to have a first time, a run in the first four. Is yeah. like a rarity. He yeah, doesn't push he, him. He, he doesn't push him. And this him. ran a cracking good race. Yeah, funny, similar name to Unbelievable Chad. It's called Unbelievable Land. They're both by Toreador. This is a Toreador, read by Mr. Prithi Pal, who owns it. Mm. He's been a client to Des's uh, for, for a very for, long for time. For ages. Yeah. So uh, let's go have a look. It's drawn towards the outside. Unbelievable Land. Very good debut. There it is, drawn to, uh, two off the outside. I think it's right on the outside. Right on the outside yeah. fence, yeah. The outside gate is closed. It gets a bump from the horse drawn next door to it. Tucks in, and look where it ends up. It ends up, the outside going looked to be the best, but Marcus went right down the middle here on the, uh, the favourite. Looked like yeah. the, the right horse. But this horse is now right on the right hand side of your screen. And he's dropped off them uh, three or four or five lengths. So this horse, I think, can run a bit because yeah. the way he finished, he's, he's got to have some ability. He looks like he's King Katini is, yeah, King Katini's gone very fast in the white in front, and that uh, looks Looked like uh, the right horse, but here Jared Samuels ridden a very good race running down to final two films. He moves him out here, and here you see Greenness. He's one horse off the outside fence at this stage. He moves him in, and the horse just keeps moving in and hits the front because King Katini's had enough. But Arthur Marcus is coming up in the Eustace Silks alongside Unbelievable Lad and Asian Stars running on. You'd, yeah, you'd think here yeah, that he's probably just Greenness gets him beat, and Marcus, um, you know, pulls the stick through to his left and just gets that little bit extra out of the favourite, but this was a really, really fine run. This yeah. horse comes on from this run, he's going to uh, he's going to be, be very, very competitive next yeah. time he runs. And um, I would think that he's certainly worth following. And on the same day, we went to the last race, um, you've got American Pharaoh standing at stud at Kumu in Australia making a sensation. Well, we've got our own Pharaoh, African Pharaoh, um, uh, running in the last race, had his first start by Mambo in Seattle, beautiful colt. And uh, watch his run. He looks like he's quite good. Yeah, this is one of Brown Bernard's colours. You know his silks is drawn in two here. And it, it's a, a good run around the corner. The favourite is a horse called Tower of Wisdom, which comes over from the deep draw. Second off the right-hand side of your screen is Tower of Wisdom. This wins, uh, incidentally, Dennis Dry a four on the day. And Arthur's just looking that he doesn't interfere with anybody as he brings it over. And the horse we found is on the fence, just being urged to keep his position. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he, He's, uh, interestingly enough, you look at the way your horse moves up in the pink colours, um, that really canters up to the winner, but I don't think he's, he's like uh, Arsenal, but no guts. No guts. And um, this horse is about fifth on the, on the fence here. Big, long striding, beautiful horse, sheepkin nose band, Brown Bernard's colours. Um, the winner is uh, three, four lengths in front of him, Anton Marcus second at this stage. And you'll see this horse goes up the inside. He's a big, long striding horse, as I said, and I think you'll find this horse will improve a lot from that. Yeah, race masters, the pacemakers had enough. Now, Arthur moves on the inside, and our horse cruises up, and I thought, well, here we go, it's going to be Angel Landing's day, but in behind us is the horse we found called African Pharaoh. The runner-up sees the day, comes over from outside, but this this debut for third is a good debut. Runs on really well. I, I like this horse's action. I think he's got a great action. It looks like a, a horse that could stay on very nicely, and certainly over uh, this type of trip in the future might be well worth having a look at.
Exactly. Is, has this horse moved, James? I know Brian's relocating a lot of horses. I yeah. don't know what's going yeah, on. Know. Apparently, okay. this. Uh, who Probably, knows? You know. Yeah. Um, Brian told me himself. So yeah. I'm not putting this information out there that people don't know. He told no, me. No, Gareth's <laughs> left with a few horses. Yeah, apparently. I know. D Dennis yeah. Bosch getting twenty and Mark Dixon getting ten. He told yeah. me. Okay. Well, there you go. That's okay. um, that's what's the latest. Happen. Um, maybe he's paying the same training fees to them because he told us it cost 4,900 Rand to keep a horse. Well, I don't know. It will be I don't know what the story would be interesting, but uh, for young Gareth, it's not good for young Gareth. He well, Gareth's out there in the, the, and don't worry, Gareth will have a go and we'll yeah. get him on the show and we'll, we'll chat, chat to him because uh, he's a very, very nice young very man. Very likeable certainly. young man. Very yeah, likeable young man. As far as trainers go, uh, yeah. he might be quite proficient and uh, certainly yeah. done a job for Brian well, Bernard. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to move on and uh, see what shouldn't happen. Right, well, we're going to move on from there and uh, see what we've got as a plum of the week. <laughs> Queen of Alamo has the lead towards the outside, G-Wiz. Primrose Lane starts to close in. Wide out casual. Diamond's also starting to run on with sail set. They come to the final 250 now. Primrose Lane up the outside. Casual Diamond given her head and she's coming home strongly. Back towards the inside, Queen of Alamo. Wider out sail set's also trying to run on. It's casual Diamond out in front and is swept into the lead and going to take a power of beating. They won't catch this one. Wins it by about three from sail set. Going to be tight for third. Maybe Extradite flew up for third third head of Queen of Alamo, but that one's close. Then came G. Wiz and Primrose. Well, the Storta Var won uh, two in a row. This was the third in a row, and uh, she absolutely cantered in. She was 17. She was odds against. That was ridiculous. Yeah, she yeah. could not possibly lose this during the week. Looked like an absolute business. And um, certainly, Interbet 17 to 10. I know she started 13 to 10 or 12 to 10, but you got the price there. Phew, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, um, there was the um, biggest volume on her. Everything on Interbet showed you that she was the one to have a bet. What is interesting with Interbet is that they do the volume. So you can see how much money is bet on a horse yeah. through their site, yes. which is a very, very good indicator. Um, yeah. uh, but you've got to be a subscriber, obviously. Yeah. And then you can go into the exchange and see on the exchange. And this filly was 17 and even 18 to 10, 10. on the exchange. Good price. Yeah. 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 Snaith uh, steam, steam rolls them again. And certainly a great bet during the week. But we're going to go and have a little break. We're going to have the sting first and then we'll have a break. Then we'll be back. Well, the key features for me are I play a lot of soccer 10, soccer 6s and soccer 4s on the tote. And the key feature for me is that I can follow online the payouts as the soccer matches are going and, exact, and see exactly where I stand. And if I see I'm winning a lot of money, I can always back the other team to cover myself as well. So even if I don't catch the soccer team, I can still make money from it if I'm in a position where it's paying a lot of money. So that is the key thing for me, that I follow the, the in-play prices and payouts as they go.
Right, let's go and see uh, current affairs. We've got some uh, very interesting racing, mainly from overseas. Right, uh, current affairs, uh, international races we're looking at this week because uh, it's building up towards the Breeders' Cup, so there's been some great races, and uh, one, we're going to see uh, Frankie salute when he thought he'd won, is that correct? Yeah, we've got a, a whole lot of um, interesting races. We start in York, I think, as we start with the Yorkshire Oaks, because we told you last week this filly will win the Ark, and uh, this was her prep race for the Ark, she just warmed up here in Abel. And uh, watch her from the, I think we got her from the 600, 1,200 metres, six furlongs out. She's cantering along in front. Doesn't, doesn't put in a deep breath. Which is the halfway point this, look at in you. the Darley Yorkshire Oaks. And Enable has made every yard of the running so far. And looks comfortable at the head of affairs then as they race down the side of the track. Queen's Trust, its white face is in second place. Coronet and Abingdon race together in third and fourth. Neswar poised towards the back of the field with Alluringly, and now they turn in towards the home straight now with just over half a mile left to travel. They're coming away from the rail again towards the centre of the track. And Frankie in charge here on board, Enable. Queen's Trust still two lengths down in second. Coronet now has been given the hurry up by Olivier Pellier. Abingdon is also pushed along. Neswa is making up some ground from the back of the field. Alluringly is still last, but Enable is not stopping. She's pressing on as she goes down towards the final quarter mile. Now Frankie asking her to engage top gear. She's clear by four to five lengths. Queen's Trust is not giving up. She's trying hard to rest back this brilliant filly. Then in third, then is Coronet. Neswa making heavy weather of getting past her. Enable still the leader, edging towards the far side of the, the track, but is clear by six lengths here. And Enable, this brilliant filly, will complete an Oaks treble and can, maintains her winning run in brilliant style. All the way, winner of the Darley Yorkshire Oaks, Enable and Frankie de Torrey. A one-two for John Gosden, Coronet second, Queen's Trust, and Neswa next. Whoa, James. This filly is very good. You know, I've watched her win a few times. But they say she's now won three Oaks. She won King George, didn't she? Yeah. She's, she's just beaten everything. She's beaten everything. Super. You know, and uh, we've had a, a decade, if I can use that, of fillies dominating. You know, from uh, even in Australia, the, the Winxes, the Black Caviars here. We had Vodacom during July winning fillies. And this filly is as tough as any colt. Oh, yeah. She's a um, she's different class. And uh, I, I think that... The arc they can come, you know. She can race from she's a up there. Yeah, she's um, she, she, she'll be put in the race early. Mm. Um, she doesn't have to get cover or anything. She can race in any way you like. And uh, obviously, look, she's had racing, but she just won, wins the races. Yeah. But we move on to the next uh, uh, race we're going to show you, and obviously from the York meeting as well. The Nunthorpe Stakes is obviously a huge sprint, and Wesley Ward. He's never won at York. He's run second before. He bought Lady Aurelia. It was all the talk in the race. But look who goes and beats it. Our friend Sir Mark Prescott. Let's go and see uh, the Nunthorpe Stakes. They're off. The Group 1 Coolmore Nunthorpe. Washington, D.C. was a little squeezed out at the start. Lady Aurelia in the centre. Yellow jacket away well under Frankie. Take cover. Red Soaks prominent. Batage towards the near side with final venture. Close the rail. Then Alpha Delphini from Priceless. Profitable far side. Marsha Black Cap tracks. Then Kotai Glory. Gold Dream. Having been squeezed out at the start, Washington, D.C. is towards the rear of the field. And they're already hurtling down towards halfway. Lady Aurelia on the right. 
Batash on the left, the big two take cover chases, the Marsha Black Cap edging a bit closer and then Alpha Delfini on down to the last furlong and a half, Frankie shakes up Lady Aurelia, Batash is challenging strongly, Marsha joining in on the near side, three across the track, Marsha tackling Lady Aurelia who's just beginning to edge off a true line, Lady Aurelia the far side, Marsha trying to peg her back on the near side, Lady Aurelia and Marsha as they race close home, tremendous finish between the two in the Nunthorpe, Frankie punches the air, the judge however will decide, they can The judge however will decide, James, lovely chirp that, for all intents, I thought Frankie won it. He did too, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they, they've got a clip going around of three jockeys who saluted off their one. One was Kevin Shea. Yeah. One was the Melbourne Cesar. Cup. Yeah. The Melbourne Cup one. And this yeah, is the Dramidas third one. That, or, yeah. 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 This is the third one they've added. The jockeys thought they'd won, but I really thought Frankie had won on that. Well, you know, it's a fabulous story, and that's what makes horse racing. Yeah. Because uh, these guys, it's an, the elite racing syndicate that own this horse. 10,000 members they've got. How many? 10,000. They pay 200 pounds a year, okay, and they have a whole lot of horses in training with various people. So Mark Prescott, obviously one of the great trainers yeah. without, so the, Mark, yeah. without the horses. He just doesn't have the horses, you know. Yeah. He, he's, he's been doing it for decades. He's, and he's brilliant at, at putting horses horse you, in the You right know him place. quite well, don't you? Yeah, I worked for him for nearly two years. So I know Does him he very still well. Talk to you? He's, a, he's a great guy. <laughs> and I mean, and yeah. a great trainer, a great yeah. strategist. He looks after his horses well. He's got beautiful property in Newmarket. I keep telling Mike de Kock, go and visit him, you'll hear some stories like you can't believe. But Mike de Kock doesn't like a cigar, he likes a cigar, Mark, you know, that's... Uh, is, it, yeah. so is that where you learnt it from, yeah, or from yeah. your father? From all of them. All of them. <laughs> all <laughs> the above. Yeah, you're famous <laughs> bad, for your cigars. Bad, bad, bad habit. But, but you we'll don't see inhale, we'll you, see you, us, you just We'll see a cigar it. smoker later on, because we've got something coming up that's uh, even more interesting. Okay, let's um, move on to the next one then, Jim. Just, just finalising, it was named Marsha because they had a competition amongst the members of the syndicate to give it a name. And this uh, one woman said, let's call it Marsha, because my aunt was named Marsha or something. And that's what they called it. And it won, this filly won the Prix de la Bay last year. Remember that? Wow, of course. Got so it's a multiple that. group one winner. So it's multiple it's valuable, group one. Valuable. Beautiful filly and great for the small people in racing. And uh, this should be done more often. These, these mm -hmm. little syndicates is fantastic when they win races. But now we go to the big stuff, because uh, the fourth leg of the Triple Crown in America is always called the Travis Stakes. Saratoga, they all step out there. They go and want to win the, um, the Travers to win the fourth leg of the Triple Crown. All the usual suspects were there. It's a way to get into the Breeders' Cup. Let's go and see what unfolded from the start. They're off in the Travers. And West Coast comes out running with cloud computing, taproot and always dreaming. And these four are out the best. And Irap is away running in fifth. Giuseppe the Great is sixth. Fayak is seventh. And then comes Gervin, followed by McCracken, Gunnavero looking at Lee, and Good Samaritan trails the field. So it will be West Coast and Mike Smith to take up the running in the early stages of the Travers with always dreaming the Kentucky Derby winner just a length behind. And the Preakness winner, Cloud Computing, is third through a 23.82 opening quarter mile. IRAP is on the outside. Tappert, the Belmont winner, is fifth, and he's four and a half lengths off the lead. Then Giuseppe the Great and Fayek. Two and a half to look in at Lee, who's alongside of Gervin. And then comes McCracken, right alongside of Gunavera. And biding time is Good Samaritan, who's trailing the field, and he's 15 lengths off the lead after a 48.12 half mile. So it's been a sensible pace so far in this Travers, and West Coast is the leader. Always dreaming is breathing down his neck on the outside. Tapret is making a middle move now, and he's up into third inside of Cloud Computing, who's getting nudged along to keep up. Irap is on the outside of him. Three to Gervin, then Giuseppe the Great. Gunavera is on the far outside, beginning to move up as the field makes their way into the far turn. It is West Coast the leader. Three quarters up in 112.23 seconds. IRAP is on the move, and so is Gunavera, who's blasting by horses on the far outside with a blitz up into third. And then it's Tapret, always dreaming, has given way. Cloud Computing's on his outside. Giuseppe the Great is at the rail, and they're into the stretch, and it's West Coast. IRAP confronts him. Gunavera!
Furlong comes up on the outside of them and Taprit is fourth. Furlong to run. Mike Smith getting all from West Coast as he clings to the lead from Gunnavera. Irap is third in the inside. Taprit is fourth and is West Coast and he keeps on rolling. And West Coast goes wire to wire in the Travers. It was Gunnavera second, Irap was third, and Taprit was fourth at a final time of two minutes, 1.19 seconds. Well, shoot, James, that was impressive. The only clean horse won it from the uh, front. The, the, two clean horses ran first uh, and third. Listening to the commentator who put me to sleep, that was slow times. One twelve. No, they, they went. They, they allowed this horse to dictate, and that's what won him the race. Yeah. Um, he he rode a brilliant race, Mike Smith, and uh, you know. Bob uh, Bevard wins a few races. Rob, eh? Bob Bevard and, and and Saratoga is just the place to be at this yeah, time of the year. Yeah, brilliant, for fantastic brilliant. racing. But um, okay. there's been a lot of hype uh, um, in the last uh, week about uh, the big fight. Conor McGregor, who, if you watch Winning Ways, you would have uh, learned a little bit about him when we talked about the Pegasus World Cup and uh, Floyd Mayweather. Well, we all got up to watch the fight. I thought McGregor uh, covered himself in glory. Yeah, I he, he went did 10 rounds of well. the greatest fighter around. He just ran out know? of puff. Um, but we thought we'd show you how he got involved in horse racing. Because this uh, Irishman, I don't think he ever seen a horse in his life, but they got him involved in the Pegasus World Cup this year to do the adverts. He did four adverts. Okay. And we showed the, a couple of the others on okay. Winning Ways. We thought we'll show you the fourth one, which we didn't catch up with, so that you just uh, remember Conor McGregor fondly as um, a jockey. Ready to qualify for the Pegasus World Cup Invitational? All right, here's my secret winning technique. You ride this horse. You ride it as fast as you can. And then you get to the finish line first. That's it. To get to the finish line first. Oh, what the hell do you want to do? Get to the finish line last? You never even trained junkies, have you? I have not. <laughs> Connor, do me a favor. I want you to wear my lucky scarf. Whatever. He's the greatest jockey on the planet. Coach, coach, you should take this time to apologize. Apologize to who? The abs are and Lily, nobody. Come on, buddy. I can't believe you actually did that. You're amazing. The world's greatest. I worry you suffer from low self-esteem. Well, there you go. That's what's called thinking out the box. And that's how the Americans put together the TVG uh, $12 million Pegasus. They decided to use Conor McGregor. Fantastic. And let me tell you, they got millions and millions of the youngsters, viewers, people yeah. under 25 watching, the same as people who watched this fight. Yeah. Everyone got involved. Everyone got involved, got involved yeah. in it. Billion. And uh, it just shows you, he was there with the horse racing business and, and uh, Saratoga, uh, not Saratoga, Gulfstream, where they had this whole thing, uh, owned by the Stronach Group, set, to, set up this whole advertorial with Conor McGregor. And Conor McGregor is loved by every kid who likes yeah. MMA. And yeah. you know what, we no, don't even know what is. MMA is. We, I didn't really. know yeah. until, uh, you know, a few months back when they started all these ads, but... We, uh, uh, I think Raymond's been able to download what we found uh, from yesterday. They had the Qatar Racing in, uh, at Scottsville, 
And a couple of the riders rode with cameras on their caps. And uh, one who rode for me, who ran second, uh, Salim Saleh, a uh, uh, hell of a nice guy, brought me the, the clip of it, James, to watch. Has he got the same name as surname? Salim Saleh? So, something like that. Okay, something like that. So let's, uh, Sully is a, a, a good lad. Uh, we'll show you the clip. Uh, we, the sound isn't that good, so James and I will talk over it. But here it is. This is the clip of the race yesterday on Freddie Flint. And uh, you'll see him have a look over. That's my other horse. He looks at my other horse. And there's the sound in the background. James, this is the actual footage yesterday of the race. Well, I hope it's actual footage. I hope you haven't uh, simulated it. That no, no, that's, that's you know, completely him. It looks like they're, they're going quite it. fast. Yeah, she, and Freddie was near the speed. You'll see Mace's horse, I think it's Mace's horse, come right across Dale House. Because the eventual winner goes, starts making a move now on the left-hand side. Tropical Sun wins the race for me. And this guy makes a move now. This yeah. is running down to uh, the final two furlongs. You'll see Tropical Sun. Is he keeping front. balance? This, your no, boy? He, he's very, very not. But he gets done in a moment. Tropical Sun straightens up. And look at Mace's horse. That came from the inside fence. You can hear him screaming. Yeah. And then he goes back up the inside. And they weren't allowed whips, so weren't. you can just see him pushing his head off. Yeah, trying to catch the stable mate. And he gets beaten a length. He closes in after being interfered with. This has been a, a, a good initiative to uh, buy the Jockeys Academy because they're get, getting some money in, which uh, funds, which is good. And they, we've got one of the few facilities worldwide that yeah. uh, you know you can end up having people come here and learn to ride. Yeah. And ba I think where the, the the Jockeys Academy fell down is that when you get these guys in, call the trainers to a meeting at breakfast. Yeah. Introduce them all to them. Let yes. them know. We see a whole lot of guys wandering around. I yeah, don't know who I, they I, are. I took and them let me tell you, the riding masters never came. I took them under my wing them. from day one. And, yeah. and, uh, well, we didn't know. You obviously I, I, I just about. used the analogy of imagine somebody going to Qatar. Imagine yeah. we seen our top three apprentices or ten apprentices yeah. to Qatar. No one would know them. No one would know the language. Introduce them to us. Get, That's right. You know, let That's us right. know who they are and, uh, and that, have a little chat yeah. to each of them and find out about what they're doing here and why yeah. they're here. For a month, I didn't know who these guys yeah. were. I thought they were just uh, amateurs that wanted to come and ride a bit of work. Yeah. You know? No, they're, they, they, they they're very nice guys, James. I, I've known them for two months. They've ridden work for me, ridden grass gallops, and they really have improved. The Academy Masters had them ride those those ponies, that, uh, not the ponies, the uh, what the exercises or whatever yeah. they're called. Yeah. And they couldn't believe how bad they were when they started. Two months later, they've improved a lot. And Good even there, when he's running second, the yeah. guy riding for his son, he's running second, he shouts after the lad to his mate. Bravo, bravo! You know, is that good? Uh, is that a good Qatarian word? Bravo. Yes, yes, no. uh, French okay. Qatarian. Yeah, it's French, French Qatarian. Okay. Bravo. Yeah. So well done to Nick these guys, Qatarian. and uh, in interesting to to watch the footage. I'd like to got the footage from the other camera because that was ran lost. Yeah, you'd have seen the whole field, but uh, that was the runner-up's camera. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, the most important news to come out of the week was Graham Motion took uh, the Kentucky Horse Racing Board to uh, court over a five hundred dollar fine he got. Okay, for a prohibited substance that took the race away from him, five hundred dollars. Most people just pay the five hundred dollars. It's a slap on the wrist because you've got the stuff in your horse. He said this is rubbish. He said um, this absolute liability rule is yes. completely wrong. wrong. And he ended up winning. He won the, his case. He yeah. won his case. Constitutionally, it's not correct. They're now, changing that's the rule have, now. That's going to have worldwide reverberations as far as jockey. James, that so, state yeah. have changed have changed the rules. Of course, they've got the to, precedents yeah. being but set. But everyone else is going to fall into line too because yes. if you've got a defence, you should be able to. Give your defence, yes. okay, and then the case must be weighed up on its merits. And it was very interesting reading Bill Finney's article in the in the, uh, the TDN this morning about this case. And he says this has been so long in coming because yeah. um, uh, the, the judge uh, ruled um, unequivocally for yeah, yeah. Uh, Graham Motion, and good for Graham Motion. You good. know, for a small fine, he said most people couldn't afford it and co couldn't get up there and go and do something about it, and he did something yeah, about it. Said, it, it yeah, he said most people say a slap in the wrist, move yeah, on, but he said he wanted to clear his name. Yeah. He said he had done, like, done nothing wrong. Yeah. He might have done a lot of good for the rest of the world. Yeah. Right, we're going to move on and uh, meet, up, meet up with uh, Louis Hoosen after this. Uh, he's come suntan from the vault and he's going to be right here in the studio.
Right, well, here we are. We're going to be talking to Louis the King um, from the vault, Louis Husson. This is going to be a great interview. Well, racing has some interesting characters and uh, none more so than in the trainer's ranks uh, amongst the rank and file. You have uh, guys who every now and again step up to the plate and are prepared to say what they think and be prepared to try and make informed decisions on what racing should be doing with itself. One is Louis Khoursen. Now, unfortunately, he's always been quite a long way away from us, which is uh, stuck at the vault. Uh, but as a result of the recent move to Ashburton, we were able to get him in the studio and we'd like to find out about that. Louis, nice to have you with us. Oh, thanks, James. Well, what happened? What, you know, you're the vol boy. What, what happened? Well, you, you were in charge there. You ran the show. You had lots of nice things to say always. You got the, the track sorted out. Now you've moved to Ashburton. What's going on? Oh, nothing much. It's just um, it's closer to, to my deep sea fishing. It's not so far to drive with the boat. Having said that, my son's got the boat now, and I hope he comes down with it soon. No, uh, James, it, uh, it's, it's just Ashburton's very nice training centre. There's nothing wrong with the Vol. The Vol's got its issues, but so is every other training centre. There's no, there's no reason to boat. It's not anything to do with the Vol. Vol's been very good to me over the years. I think uh, um, I, I had my worst season ever last season. It was very, very bad by, by the standards we set ourselves and, and the goals we set. And one of the reasons for that was my own timing was bad with a couple of things. My planning, I, I didn't, we can't plan for the weather. And them taking the vol sand away, that, 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 that hurt me. I, I think I had a lot of winners in the vol sand. And also the vol sand was vital for me in, in, in a small string. Remember, we, we're a 35 horse string. So to find your top horses and that, you've got to look after them. There, there, there's no reserve in the team, you know. And uh, the vol sand was very important for me in preparing horses for the season. When that, look, look what's happened to the vol now. The, the course is gone. They, they've had to now move the meetings to Turfentine. That course is rock hard in winter. So when you're prepping your horses for, for the spring and summer, I used the vol sand as part of my prep. There was a sand course. And you could put four or five horses together and bring them along. And, of course, that was gone. So it's, that was the main reason is that there's no more vol sand. But the other reason is we're a small yard and your owners are limited in spend. I, I, I don't have the big budget. And, and I've been fortunate to have been able to buy a couple of very, very nice horses, which I'm, I'm really grateful for. But the overall spread of the string is not expensive horses. You've got to slot your horses in where, where it's going to be most beneficial for your owner. So looking at the KZN program, the, the horses running here, knowing what Sean and Michael and, and, and the, the big boys are going to bring out in summer in, in, in Gauteng, you know I need to earn stakes for the owner. So there were a couple of, um, a couple of reasons for the decision, not just... I don't like the Vol and I prefer Ashburton. Having said that, Ashburton's fantastic. It's yeah, this is nasty. a permanent relocation. It's not just for four or five months and then you go back to the Vol. No, it's permanent. Um, we will, we've said we'll always keep yard 8B, which is a small 12 horse yard um, at the Vol open, but even that might not make financial sense. If you take a filly like hashtag Strat, I'm just waiting for the programs. We've, we've, we've got a total mess up in racing. These guys are messing up the game, but nobody's got a program. Patrick Davis and in his year in, in national, uh, the Racing Bureau brought us out a seven-month summer program and a five-month winter program. Nobody's got their programs in order. You brought out a KZN program. It's now been, uh, um, it's been revised, and we've got September. You know, it's all sickness time and uh, vaccination time, so you, you're trying to plan. And the, they've done the same uh, um, in Gauteng uh, with messing up the courses. Now, nobody knows how to program. You do need a longer program to look at it. So I can't be sure, but if I look at a filly like Ashtag Strat and, 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 and Effortless Reward, where they're rated, and which features I'm taking to them this season, those two fillies might, from here, go back to the Vol. You know, because there's races for them there, and they've got a feature to plan. But we've moved into Hayfield, St. Peter Marisburg, Lauren and myself, and our yard is at Ashburton. Lauren's been with you a long time? Yeah, she does more medals than Eddie, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and your son Christopher, he's a bit of a boykey. He gets out there and does some um, some interesting work. You guys had a security company at one stage, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. We we, we still we still do CCTV. CCTV. Um, yeah, CCTV. But we we do the corporate installations. We don't. We wouldn't do the corner cafe or four cameras for your home, etc. Um, uh, big stuff. And that's been very quiet. The economy is quiet. Why? So it's been standing still. 
Just talking about that, and I'm glad we met, you mentioned it, surely the race courses need to have CCTV in the, in the saddling area and the, and the holding boxes. Surely that should be a priority? It's a priority and it's very easy to do, but, but James, you know, technology does cost money. And monitoring a camera, you know, it, it's one thing to put in a lovely CCTV system. Somebody's going to monitor, who's going to monitor it live or who's going to monitor recording. So you can go and say, look, an incident happened between two and three, let's go and watch the replay, sure. But, um, yeah, the that's what you need right? it for. You've got, you've got CCTV at Gravel and, and, and they've got a Turfentine, a very good system, because I know we put it in. Yeah. So it's very good. No, but I'm talking about the, the, the back areas. The, you know, the holding boxes really need to have CCTV in, I would have thought. And you're an expert on it, so I'm asking yeah. you, you know, whether... Yes, it's... yes, yes. And, and, and CCTV, as we move to the digital format, um, you know, the old, old TV cameras are measured in TV lines and the new ones are, are, are obviously megapixels. And there's some very, very... As this has become the norm, it's, it's not expensive anymore. It's, it's actually relatively inexpensive. In fact, the new IP systems... Um, that one of our suppliers put in the market are, are, are cheaper than the old TV line systems were, so the old analog systems, so yeah. And you're also in a new um, little business, uh, water. What's the water business all about? The water is a, an absolute surprise. I, I, I just become aware of, we all are aware of water and, and the effect it has on our health and, and it's the one area of life we've neglected. We've all worried about all the farmers putting steroids, what growth hormones into the meat? Is it a white fat built or a yellow fat built? All of, you know, and we were worried more about sugar and stuff like that, and we forgot about water. And I got in, interested in RO water, reverse osmosis. They got these RO shops, and I was buying that water for our home um, to cook in and, and, and with and to drink. And by chance, a friend of mine, Fred Sayers, uh, he called up and he said, I've, I've got this wonder water. I said, Fred, stick to the telephone, send me some CCTV business. I'll do the CCTV and send you some telephone business, but water. Uh, I've got aura. No, no, there's wonder water. And that's really what happened. It's an alkaline water and it's, it's really, it's not one of these numerical drugs or anything. It doesn't replace anything, but it's, a, it's super hydration. Absolutely. There's nothing, no other water can hydrate you uh, as wonder water. And, and I've got a little plant up for the horses. It's very expensive. It would cost you 30,000 in a month if you want to put a horse permanently on, on wonder water. But I use it for the runners. And down, I've got to bring the plant. That's after this interview today. I'm on my way back to the vault to dismantle my plant and to come put it up in. in uh, so, so what does the plant do actually? You take normal water um, uh, from your supplier, where water works or whatever, and you put it through the plant. Does it purify it? Does it change its um, how it's made? No, I, I think James, what it is, it, it, it's. Let me explain to you. If you filter water. I send water through how many filters of the vial, and it's municipal water. And yet when we do reverse osmosis with it, our wastewater is still yellow green the brine's coming off. So you need to get to a basis of, of ultra-purified water, which is properly reverse osmosis water. And from that, you build wonder water, which is an hexagonal structure. But that's hexagonal structure, there's pentagonal, there's all arguments about structured water. And then there's the additives that go with to make, create wonder water, which is an alkaline water. Very good in helping your body uh, gut. No more gut tablets for me, guys. Sorry, pharmaceutical companies. I'm on Wonder Water. No more. And I'm the worst. Um, Philip Garn will tell you, his mom will tell you, I couldn't walk last year. They put me on a bit of this, well, this powder stuff in it. But it didn't work. Wonder Water's worked for me. So you need an alkaline in your body. And, and also our horses sweat. And we need, to, we need to rehydrate them as quickly as possible. So I, I don't know what a drip needle or a drip or a drench is anymore. You just, you just give the horse water. Yeah. And, if you, and a horse doesn't drink coke and tea and coffee. So you put two buckets down, the horse dives into the wonder water. So it, it, that, that tells you enough. So it's got a better, uh, a better formation than normal water. Because normal water, sometimes you find horses, if you take them and travel them, you don't take your own water. They won't drink the water where, wherever you go. Absolutely, you know? James. We know that. We, we, we've been around a long time. You know, you put that water down, it smells too much chlorine or too much whatever's in that water, the horse won't drink. And we're sitting, the horse is dehydrating. But nowadays with bleeders, we want to dehydrate them. So what's, what's right and what's wrong? But what I'm saying is, if I can do 10 times more hydration, then I can give the horse 5 litres of water, which is equivalent to 50 litres in terms of intracellular uh, rehydrating the horse without the volumes. Mm -hmm. So I can surely reduce the incidence of bleeding by giving the horse all the hydration it needs and cutting the volume. That's one of the thoughts. But listen, it, uh, you know, I'm still learning about it, but it, it, it's, it's, it's huge with humans. It's... It, it's very beneficial. And, and, and are you an agent for this? So, or do you, yes, I mean, you I'm involved. I'm business? involved with, yeah. it's a patented water. This yeah. isn't just a brand name. A brand yeah. name, Wonder Water, there's some guy with a shop called Wonder Water. He does RO Water. Mm. The Wonder Water is the brand and they use, you can also Google um, Defiance Fuel. 
in America. That's Wonder Water. It's a patent. It's patented. It's the only patented water in the world. This guy, the, one, the guy who helped with the development with Dr. Lee Lawrence, and the one, one man's got a, a, a Nobel Award for, for proving that water's got a memory and that, that how essential water is to life. And not that we've all, all known, but how, how many ills it can cure and how it can aid health. Louis, let's go back to the beginning um, and chat about your childhood and your young days in um, racing. Your father was a, a master. I remember him well, Donnie. He was a, he was a larger than life man. Yeah, yeah. How was it like being brought up with him? Well, tough. Um, there are Christians out there, so, uh, but um, uh, growing up, and I apologize, I'm not being blasphemous, we were growing up at times, of course, trouble in the yard. And I went, yeah, gee, you know, the, the, the JC word. And that's what I thought my name was. And later on, they told me, no, your name's Louis. Yes, that's not really your name. So I suppose I was quite naughty growing up in, in the yard with the horses. Uh, it's fantastic, fantastic upbringing, a fantastic grounding. They were, they were super horsemen. And that, we can talk about that. Because when last, have we forgotten about the healthy horse in modern times? In those times, they, those guys, those were horsemen of note. Look, my dad grew up here in, in, at Clarewood in uh, um, Montclair. And he started riding down, oh, Trevor Lang, the, the old timers, he started riding a bit, and then he moved down to Port Elizabeth, battled with his weight, rode the jackpot, rode a lot of feature races, rode the first winner, Wendy House, Uncle Laurie Levinson, the first winner of the, I wasn't born then, of the first derby in Port Elizabeth. Um, he did well as a jockey, and then he started training, small string and built it up, and then I think it was seven years that he was champion trainer in Port Elizabeth. And then my dad got killed in a car accident at about the age of 40, and then after that, Sandy Kriyaf era began. Uncle Stanley was there, Uncle Stanley and um, uh, Uncle Andy Smith. And all the sons are training now, so that's fantastic, you know. Yeah. With Gavin and, and Alan being down there and myself, yeah. And obviously, uh, it would be remiss of me not to mention your brother-in-law. Um, well, yes. You know, he, he's just, a, he's just a, super, a super man in this business. Yeah, yeah. You see, um, in those early years when I went, I actually went to fetch beer in 1988, we, we tied up the job with Brett Warren to get going um, um, in Joburg and he'd, I mean, Pierre, I think Pierre's an apprentice, he was champion jockey and to beat Gavin Fenter those years, who was riding for Kriev and you weren't Kriev's stable jockey, you had to be damn good and uh, as his last year's an apprentice, he was also champion jockey in PE. So Pierre, the foundation was there, the ability was there and I saw that and I spotted and said, listen, come up. And I did a bit of rides for him um, and... Uh, and the rest is history. But it appears always boiled racing down to being a common sense game. So you've got this hard grounding, this hard school, hardcore grounding from an old man. That the horse is your prisoner. You never harm a horse. Uh, you feed your horses before you eat. All the old school, solid horsemanship grounding. Then the era with P.S. Stratum, it's, it's the common sense. And seeing this brilliant jockey, just this, this naturally brilliant jockey. My, one of my greatest memories was Mr. McKinney was still training here. And we had to work at 3 o'clock in the morning. And he had to ride turf players in at International and, and later in the morning, because we had to be there in the dark and we didn't understand this at Summerfelt, and then later in the morning just watching him and Jeff Lloyd work, working horses with David Payne together. And that was just, just magnificent to see these two super, super horsemen. And he was a, he's always, he, he is to me the greatest. And over the years, um, there's a lot, of, you, a lot you learn from the, from the saddle side, which you wouldn't do as a trainer, just because of our close relationship. So that was a lot of my grounding. And then, of course, Buddy Maroon. Yeah, oh, well, that's, uh, that, uh, that uh, three, three o'clock in the morning, that put him off riding work forever. You know? <laughs> yeah. That was the end of him as far as riding that was the end work of was concerned. Listen, he worked very, very hard to get there. Once you're traveling as a jock, you can't ride work. Yeah. And when you get to his age and you're clicking and that, who's going to ride work? But he had to, to make his name, he worked very hard. But uh, just, just on him, because he, he is um, internationally uh, renowned, what is his greatest asset? Is it his balance? No, I think he'd be in trouble if they took the sticks away because people learn how to ride horses. He doesn't. Have you seen Pierre eat horse? No. If Pierre opens the stick and he puts it into his, you know, he backhands him, he taps mm. him. If he had to open the stick into the, into the front of his hand, then they, that horse is really taking on. But he knows that. And he will just not beat a horse up. So he relies a lot on his judgment, his timing, and knowing what's underneath him. And he doesn't have to work. And the guy cancels it to the start. He, he also studies his form, don't worry. And he watches. Mm. He watches replay after replay. But he's, he's just, he's, he's got a gift in the saddle. It's not about strength, but the one thing is his upper body strength. Is he, 
he blends with the horse. And he, he, it's not, he's not pushing from the shoulders. And his legs. His legs are incredibly yeah, are, um, powerful. Because to hold that position, yeah. the length yeah. of the race, and then be so balanced and square on a horse. That's what I think his strength is. He's yes. so square. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't move off a, off a center, central point, which makes it easier for the horse to get it to carry him. Okay, there's a couple of subtleties which I'll talk about now. We've never spoken about it. I don't want to be blown away. There are certain things that Pierre does it's you know it's just he's unconsciously unconsciously competent he doesn't have to think about it anymore he'll take a horse to a right hand turn it's led it's led with the with the off four you will immediately at the top of the straight you will see a subtlety a subtle change of weight in the eyes and he'll get the horse onto the other leg and he's going to finish that race with with the, with the off four again mm -hmm. that's what we call the squeeze that last 50 the last hundred he's going to come and get you mm -hmm. and also if you come into getting him make it a bit tight for you Lost an objection yet. No, the other day. Yeah, but there's another 20. He should have lost you. He is but the best. But listen, he's yeah. going to do those things. And yeah. these are the little skills that um, uh, we all, I'm excited about young Luke Ferrara. So I think he has a young at 15. Don't want to give him a big head, but I think at 15, he's doing everything right um, at home where I'm seeing it as Burton. And I'm putting him on some difficult horses too, and I'm making him steady canter horses too. It's not all yeah, uh, uh, the glory days, uh, glory rides, you know, having gallops. And you're seeing a youngster like this and you think, think Jesus, where can I mold this guy? Now, as much as what we can teach him, as much as I can see on TV, those gifts that Pierre's got, those, those little things on which leg, when to squeeze, when not to, that I think just comes, that, that makes you special. And I think that's why he's special. He's made a difference to your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, made it a hell of a lot harder. <laughs> he's the most useless tipster I've ever seen. <laughs> he thinks everything works on form. So you can go to him and say, listen, but this horse has improved 10 lengths at home. We fired him. And he'll come into the parade and say, you can't beat this and you can't beat that because that beat this and the weight turned around there. So, you know. Oh. So he's, he's, he's stuck he's, me out too many And he's many no times. good on a golf course either. No, on like the a golf pads. course, that's the worst thing. I think. He hits it like no, a pansy. No, no, but the, 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 the practice swing. Have you seen the practice no, no, swing? That's different. Tiger course, Woods so. got no chance. Yeah, yeah. Practice swing, Tiger, Tiger Woods, Tiger Line, practice swing, out of the books. The minute he addresses the ball, he gets the yips. Yeah, well, there you are. You see, that's what happens. He's got <laughs> other gifts. Yeah. Coming back to KwaZulu Natal. Um, you made the move. Uh, what's good about it? What's bad about it? What can you see that you think need to be done? Because you're a guy who's going to get involved in the process. Tell us what you think. I'm not going to get involved in the process. You are. You, I, no, promise, you, no, I promise nature, my family. It's in my nature and it's in your nature. You yeah, I, I promise no. my family and my friends I won't get involved. No. Um, uh, it's 17 years of the vol. You take a lot of flack. Uh, the gratitude's not there. So I like to think that the Vaal is very strong today. The guys are really unified. And I think it's better off today than what it was. And let's leave it at that. I think um, a small yard, we just got to go and try and earn stakes for the owners. Uh, as far as uh, Ash Burton is concerned, uh, I love the training track. You know, I like a heavier track. I've never worked on the number one at the Vaal. I only work on the number two. And, and, and I, I want a heavier track, a shorter track. It's a Buddy Maroon, Louis Hurston type thing. It, 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 that, 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 I think, is very important to me. Um, the environment, man, you think you're at a game reserve. Um, and that means we're going to have midges like we had at the Vol, and, and somehow we're going to have to deal with it. There's Nothing's all uh, smell the roses. It's, it, it's tough anyway. Um, I love the weather. Uh, even though Ashburton's closer to the Vol, but it doesn't get as cold. So you've got, sure. uh, you like cold. It also gets very hot. No, I, I, just, I, I just... My son's a complete fan of Gold Circle. Yeah. by the way, of this show and your, your Friday night racing and just what we're seeing on, on, on camera. He looks at it from what he's seeing as a spectator of tele, through Teletrack and, and he's a huge fan of it. Uh, you know, uh, racing stuff everywhere. It's not a walkover here and it's not a walkover in PE or in Kimberley, but it's, it's a bit of a change of life and um, trying to place the horses better for the owners. Two really good sprinters that you've trained. Uh, Triptease, obviously, doing it for Dan. Would they be the best two horses you've trained? They both seem like top. Yeah, I think, I think Triptease has to be, I mean, he won 15 races. Mm -hmm. um, the computer form will tell you 14, but my form guide, winning form, my form guide says 15 because they count the, the 600 meter Durban dash that you yeah. guys have done away with because I had a couple of fillies I could have brought down this year, so you actually can today. Mm -hmm. No, um, yeah, he, he, he is definitely he is a top, top horse and never had luck in the grade ones. I mean, when you're drawn one at Turfentine, one or two and in, in, in a computer form sprint, you know you're in trouble, and especially when it had just rained. So, no, but he did very well. Um, and then doing it for Dan is by far the best horse I've ever touched. But he's a brute and he's, he's scatterbrained. He's not, luckily, he's not vindictive. 
but he'll get into the starting stalls. He doesn't hurt anybody, but he's, he's, he's a big horse. Because he's so robust, you don't realize how big he is. Only horse bigger than him is Haddington. But that we can talk about. He's a giraffe. But, but he doesn't fit into the pens nicely. And when they lead him in and he stops this far, his hind quarter sticking out. When you try and put him in, he has a go. He wants to have a kick. And he delays the start. He keeps getting suspended. The day this horse doing it for Dan puts it together, it's going to be frightening. Weishong got off him off the 1400. And he said, boy, go to a mile. And I mean, when Weishong tells you that, you don't, you don't argue. And he showed it. I'd love to see uh, his 400 to finish time um, in his last run over 14. But he's been suspended now. So we're re-schooling him again. The one thing is we, we weren't allowed in Joburg to, 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 to lead a horse in and have the jockey waiting in. But you're waiting for the horse, a problem horse. You're allowed to do it in Joburg and you're allowed to do it in Cape Town. For some reason, we're not allowed to do it in Joburg and we couldn't school him like that. So that's what we're re-schooling him. Because he walks in quite nicely without the rider. So we hope it comes right. Well, they seem to be able to make all these innovative new ideas work. Talking about your hobbies, um, you're a Blue Bull supporter. You must be having a lovely time, you know, watching that. Yeah, you know, I don't know. You know, I said, uh, I don't know, maybe we are black, we are white, we are dynamite, we might go to the Sharks now because... I don't <laughs> You've know got what, to be with the Sharks. I don't you know, know what my boys are doing. <laughs> <laughs> We're in trouble, James. in trouble. James. We're in trouble. <laughs> in trouble that you must be too. But, uh, but Liverpool... I'm not walking alone, mate. No. All right. Well, at least you found something. I knew that you'd get to that. I'm not mentioning it. I'm not talking about it. Fishing, you love fishing. Yeah, I love deep sea fishing, you know, um, and uh, it will work out quite well because by the time I've only, Johan Jansen van Fieren and myself were sharing the yard, sections of the yard during the season. So his was only left last week. So now I'm starting to, to get this yard right. It'll be another month and it'll be just perfect timing from October for, for the fishing. Yeah, Mozambique. Well, I go to Mozambique as much as I can, um, but now you, you're close enough to Durban, you don't have to go to Durban. No, you can go with Dennis Bosch, that should be fun. That would be yeah, a lot of fun, no. yeah. Go to Bosch, the, the, uh, Bosch, you don't leave him out in the open sea, keep him in the harbour. Don't leave him out in the open at all. And don't yeah. leave him out in the open anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Louis, listen, we wish you all the very best. Is there anything you'd like to say to prospective clients out there? You know, obviously, there's, uh, you're always looking for someone to come and support you. I always am, yes. Um, but, you know, I, I've, I've got that my old school ethical way of doing things, all I can say as well, we offer our services, we communicate well, and, and, and I think we, we do get the best out of all. So, yeah, and you've and got we a, have got some open boxes. Yeah. You've, got a, you've got a website that people can go and have a look at? Yes, it's very, very, Sharp Authority is going to jack it up for me. It's a little bit behind, um, mm. but we've now got the codes and we're going to be jacking it up. Yeah. Well, we wish you all the best here. I think that you've got to make a great contribution to racing and certainly KwaZulu Natal needs people that are going to make a contribution. We hope you have a great time. Uh, thanks, James. Yeah, thank you. Louis Horsen, uh, known him since he was a kid, and my goodness, he's had a lot to say, and thank goodness he had a lot to say on the show. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next week, we should have a great week's racing. Your world of winners is now online at www.teletrack.com. Simply subscribe to log into your account from any mobile device in South Africa and access a wide variety of content from our membership package options. Listen in via a live audio stream, catch live racing locally and internationally, or view a wide variety of Teletrack magazine shows to stay informed and updated on the go at any time. It's never been easier. Go to teletrack.com now.